Hey folks, Cyrus Gold here, and I'm coming to you guys with a bit of a video guide this time for my Alistair build, which I refer to as Hard Moon. And I just want to kind of give you guys a bit of a walkthrough of the runes, masteries, and the item set, as well as how successful this build's been so far in the last handful of games I've played with it. Now, let's start by going in over to, um, let's just go right to the master history, and I'll explain some more about the build. So, here you can see, I mean, ignore some of the other games, custom, ARAMs, whatever, you know. But of the of the Alistair games that I played with this build, I've only lost a couple out of the last, you know, however many here. And uh, notice that with the majority of the ones, even the lost ones, like right here, I still got a positive KDA. Uh, this game didn't last very long; it just went downhill pretty fast. You know, things went bad. A couple mistakes early game led to a defeat there, and that was a ranked game too. Kind of sucked, but yeah. But otherwise, uh, as you can see, ranked game, ranked game, you know, that's the first video right there. Um, that one's actually the second video. I kind of didn't record that one. It went very well, though. But that one was just about as good, I suppose. You know, 1519, 4532, or sorry, 4632, um, you know, and then 2725. That was a tough game. Uh, that was actually a, um, it was a normal game. Uh, yeah, that right there lost, but I still ended up with a positive KDA with that one. But that one right there um, faced a platinum player on the other team. It's kind of lopsided uh, because you know have a gold had a gold in our team, had a couple of silvers, faced a platinum and some bronzes. The platinum player was pretty strong. Uh, played uh, Vayne, you know, and you know kept catching me just after my ult expired. Which is one of the downsides of this build. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead though, and I'll explain about the upside and downside of the build uh, after I get done explaining the rest of the stuff. The runes. So here's the runes for the Ardent Moo build. I run nine armor marks, as well as four armor seals. I run five mana regen seals, three health quints, and then nine mana glyphs. The nine mana glyphs here are extremely important to this build. It's what makes it work. Let's make make sure I don't run out of mana along with the mana regen here. Um, but I'll get more on that in a second. Then we get to the, the uh, mastery page. That's zero nine twenty one. I go with health here and some damage reduction here. Now that's kind of basic stuff. Now over here I go for some more mana regen. That plus the runes puts me at uh, 5 mana per 5, which is about 1 per second. That's like really strong right there. I also have an additional 5% maximum mana there. Now once I get the frozen heart, that's another 400 mana on top of the growth stat plus, you know, the extra 101 mana. You know, I mean, level 1, I'm looking at about 360 mana roughly, you know, which of course comes over play here. That means I get an additional health regen per 5. Pretty nice there. So, all this mana means that I'm allowed, I'm able to, without running out of mana, spam my heal. Now what that does is it not only uh, sustains myself and allows me to do things that seem a little reckless or careless, um, but basically what it is doing is drawing attention away from my carry, so that he doesn't receive nearly as much poke, and since the heal heals me for, well, the full amount, and heals him for half the amount, or whatever, um, it means that I can keep us both topped off, and basically that's how I support with this build. I take hits that are meant for him, and I heal it. So I don't really care too much about the, the damage I take. It allows me to body block some minions, like the cannon minions, and hope the other minions can take it out. Of course, you know, there's ways of targeting, so you don't only hit that, but, you know, my elo, a lot of people don't quite understand that, and, you know, they end up uh, hitting me instead and losing the cannon minion. It's all great. Um, even if I get low and my ADC gets low after you know after I engage or whatever, I can actually uh, provided we uh, provided he kills the waves and stuff, uh, which reduces the cooldown of the E the heal. Um, I can actually get us back to almost full in a very short time, and it doesn't cost me all that much mana. Um, but yeah, that's the main reason behind all this mana stuff, and the reason behind the 101 mana and the glyphs, and that's what makes the sustain Alistair really strong. Of course, I got some extra gold here. Uh, starting gold 
you know, gold for each minion killed, gold for 10, all that nice stuff. Um, intelligence, this is a kind of a nice thing here. It's kind of one of the key things to this. Uh, it's not key, but it, it's just really strong for us. Um, when I have the intelligence uh, mastery here, it's a 5% cooldown reduction, which at end game, or if I get full build, is actually 5% over cap, but it takes a while to reach that. And for the rest of that game, I've got this, this extra 5% cooldown reduction. But this mastery also comes with the 10% cooldown reduction for item activations. Now that's good for not only the Zerat portal, which means I could potentially have two up from the same one for about 15 seconds, but also for the uh, Talisman of Ascension, for that active, which is really strong for supporting the team, but also for placing awards uh, or using the trinket, whatever. Um, not placing award per se, unless you get the warding trinket, but you know, early game for the warding trinket is nice. Otherwise, later game for using the sweeper or placing the uh, upgraded warding trinket, which is something I've been thinking about going for. I still haven't actually done it to try really test it out how effective it is, but I like to be able to. Um, but this would definitely help with that as well. So, all, right, all together right here, uh, there's one more little part, part to uh, go over, and that's mobility. Fleet of Foot and Wanderer helps greatly with the mobility of this build, especially when you consider all the mobility this build comes with. And that comes from the item sets. So let's go over there and have a look. Uh, this is the, I call it the ZZ support, but it's basically, this here's the original Arden Mo build, and it's nice, but it was an Aura build really. But this is the uh, new item set for it. And so here we go. The start items in this is two health pots, two mana pots, an ancient coin, and a warding totem. Basic start. Um, with the current meta in jungle, most junglers don't go for any kind of early gank. Most times the earliest you'll see a gank is right around the five minute mark. And that's because they need to do a full jungle clear back by a jungle item and then kill a couple of camps before they even get to lane. There's a few junglers that can do still do the uh, and be really effective with the early gank. And those are things like Jarvan. Uh, he's really strong on doing that right now. Uh, Jin Zhao can do it as well, but he's not quite as strong. Um, and then there's potential of Nidalee, but she requires being able to actually hit with a spear. And at my current ELO, a lot of people try it, but they don't quite do it. Uh, and even if then, what I do is I'll take the spear and I will hit them as they come jump again with my headbutt. Easy to deal with. Um, that's also another great thing about Alistair is he can uh, peel and disengage pretty well. That's one of the main things you want to do in early game with, with Alistair is focus on that to disengage. Um, very rarely this is not a really aggressive early game build and it tends to be the times when I am I try to be a little bit aggressive or am pressured by the ABC to be aggressive that things turn out a little badly. Um, it can be done, but usually in a response to aggression. But anyway, uh, but if you do face a Jarvan, especially a Jarvan, uh, it might be good to actually you know not get as many pots, focus on mana pots if you do this way, um, and start off with a uh, uh, actual ward. So that way, around the three minute mark is about the about the time that an early gank from Jarvan might happen. You pop that in the river bush. Otherwise, you can probably get by with the warding totems. Right around the three minute mark, I'll usually do the four minutes. And if he doesn't gank you by then, chances are he's going back to base to get, you know, get stuff. And you probably won't see him until about the five minute mark at that point. Uh, let's move on to the basic upgrades. So here we have, you know, you from Shivers go back. Most of the times you'll get the sight stone and the sweeping lens. And if you can, you'll possibly upgrade Nomad's Medallion or Grab Boots. Uh, you can't always do all of this. If you can, great. And in fact, that, that actually sometimes happens with this build because of the sheer amount of sustain. You can actually stay in lane a long time. I sometimes find myself not backing until almost the 8 minute mark. Uh, in which case, I am able to get all four of these things done. Um, now, sometimes though, if an early back happens, like say, you know, there's an early gank from a jungler or a bad engage happens, something bad happens, you have to go back early. Sometimes I'll go ahead and just grab the uh, Nomad Medallion instead of grabbing the Sight Stone, and I'll grab a Ward instead. You know, that should be good enough to hold off until I can come back in and actually get the Sight Stone. Um, that's actually not a bad thing to grab just a Nomad's Medallion as the first back. Uh, because it does give you that extra health, mana regen, and also gives you movement speed. Which, if you're facing someone who's doing that much damage to you, chances are it's from skill shots. 
Uh, we're talking about um, Ezreal uh, or you know some supports, the aggressive supports with skill shots, you know things like that. Um, and the extra movement speed can really help you avoid that and stay in lane longer. Plus, it does give you the more gold. And if chances are, if you're having the back early, you're going to be a little bit behind and this will help you catch up a little bit. Uh, it gives you an extra gold per mana kill. It gives you the two gold per ten. All that's really good. Uh, so sometimes, if, if you're facing troubles early game, go back, grab a Nomad's Medallion, grab a Ward. Don't grab the Sight Zone yet. We'll save that for the next pack. Chances are you'll be able to get that by then. You know. Uh, next is the important buys. Now, the order in which you buy these all depends on the comp of the team you're facing. Uh, now, if you're facing a high AP comp, you might want to go ahead and grab a Negatron Cloak before you grab a Raptor Cloak, whatever. Typically, though, you want to grab the Forbidden Idol fairly early. Now, that may build, in, if you get enough money, into the Ardent Sensor, or you may just build it into the Talisman of Ascension. That has two things you can build into to your final build, and that is one of the reasons why it's really strong. It comes with a 50% more mana regen, as well as 10% cooldown reduction. Now, next would be the Raptor Cloak. This is a really strong item in most games. It gives you 30 armor, 100% health regen, which allows you to deal more. Uh, well, not deal more, but deal with more. Uh, more poke, more rest that you can, you know, body block and stuff. Uh, but it also gives you a 30% moving speed when you're turrets. Now, once again, if you're having trouble early game, you may find yourself buying this, you know, pretty much early as well. Uh, like immediately after sight stun, they are foregoing the forbidden idol and stuff like that. Um, and the reason for that is uh, when you're near the turret, if you're being pushed back that hard, this is that's when this helps you kind of hold things off for a bit more. Uh, that movement speed when near turrets, especially when facing skill shot type people, allows you to dodge those skill shots better. Or if you need to, run in front of them and body block them so your ADC doesn't get hit by them. Um, yeah, that's kind of you know. What makes uh, that really strong right there? It also helps though when you um, get later in the game, if you still haven't upgraded the Zerah portal, or even if you have, uh, it gets the same kind of passive basically, the point runner, and that allows you to uh, when you're once you're getting near the enemy turret, you'll also get the movement speed bonus. So once you get the 30% up, which really takes about two seconds to be near the turret, you can then pop your uh, either pop your ult and run in, or you can flash in, pop your ult, and use that movement speed to make sure you catch the people. Uh, ideally, what you'd want to do there is to pop up one of the carries and knock them back into your party. Or knock them back into the party first and then pop up the rest of the people there so they can't do anything about that just yet. Uh, that's one of the more aggressive plays, slightly more dangerous plays that's gone bad for you before. So be careful about that. Um, but yeah, it generally though, it also helps you get back to lane really fast. Because as you're running past the turrets, especially if you're running into the mid lane, because you almost don't lose that passive while you're running through the mid lane. Uh, once you hit the first turret, uh, well, the, the inhibitor turret, from there on through the other two turrets, it's just straight on. Um, yeah, I'm not going to that just yet, guys. Anyway, um, now, the Negatron Cloak and the No Magic Mantle, I've had them both here because sometimes you can't put a Ford Negatron Cloak flat out, you'll go ahead and grab that. Or sometimes you'll just grab that and you want to save money um, just so you can either upgrade that to either that for the Zora portal or just go straight to the Mercury Merc Treads. So you can see here both this, uh, you know, the Dome Legend Mantle and the Forbidden Idol have two items they can build to your final build. And so that's why the, getting those two things is pretty nice. Um, now we move on to the full build. Now you got Talisman of Ascension, uh, Ardent Sensor, Drop Portal, Ruby Sightstone, Frozen Heart, and the Merc Trance. So let's start with the Talisman of Ascension. This gives you the 100% health regen as well as 100% mana regen, 20 additional movement speed, 10% cooldown reduction, and the 2 gold per 10, as well as you get 3 gold every time a minion dies, as well as 10 health. And you grant the allies a 40% movement speed as an active for 3 seconds. Uh, with a 60 second cooldown, which, thanks to the other thing, it's 15% off that, so, um, that's about 9 seconds off that, so it's actually 51 seconds. Next is the Ardent Sensor, that gives you 40 ability power, which, for this build, uh, doesn't do a whole lot, it does give you a little more damage for your Q, because that does have a decent AP scaling, and it gives you a tiny bit for your heal, but it's not really the reason for this item. 
Uh, it also comes with 10% cooldown reduction, so between that and that, you have 20, and you get the final uh, 20 from Frozen Heart. But even with just those two, you're sitting at 25 because of the 5 you get from Masteries. Uh, you also get a 100% base mana regen from the Arden Sensor, so between that and that, you're at that 200% mana regen. And then, of course, over at the Drop Portal, that gives you 100% health regen, so that you know, is why you have 200% health and mana regen base from this build. Um, it also gives you 8% movement speed. You can see a bit of a theme here from mobility. That gives you 20 movement speed. Well, tier 2 boots gives you 45 movement, uh, movement speed. And that gives you another 8%. And then there's a rock portal, which gives you another 30% when you're in your turrets. So very mobile build here. Um, but the main thing is for this item, that what really makes it really good, is the heal. Uh, the passive 4 when you heal. Uh, whenever you heal uh, an allied unit, um, you grant them 25% attack speed for 6 seconds. And Alistair's heal is the best one for this, because you hit everyone around you, minions and allies, uh, other allied champions, so you grant them that uh, attack speed bonus. Now this is really strong for high attack, uh, auto attack comps, which it just, it's wonderful. Um, we're looking at uh, some of the best comps for this, aside from the ADC, is um, like a... Uh, Oh, let's see. Um, Renekton Top's great. Uh, Jarvan Jungle, or any auto attacking jungle is great. Um, a Zed Mid sometimes auto attacks a lot because they're high AD anyway. Uh, or sometimes people will take an AD Mid ish, you know, like, or a hybrid, you know, like, you're looking at like Kale is great for this. Or um, sometimes the Nidalee's good. You know, other champions that auto attack a lot, you know. It's really strong for all the, for that kind of thing. If you got a high auto attack comp, and you're playing as Alistair with this build, it's golden. You want to rush that as soon as possible because that increases the DPS of your party by tons. But even then, when it comes to pushing, your minion wave, especially if you get the Baron buff, is just going to be so strong. Next, move on to the uh, Zrop portal next here. Now, of course, I said you get 100% base health regen, which is nice, uh, but you also get 50 armor, 50 metric resist. That's the well, the core of your well-rounded resists. Um, on top of the 100 armor from the Frozen Heart, that's why you have 150 armor and 75 magic resists from this build. You know, because the 50 armor and magic resists from here, 100 armor here, 25 magic resists from here. Now, then, of course, you have the uh, Point Runner passive from this, um, which gives you the additional movement speed when you're turrets or Void Gates for this item. Um, and, of course, you can spawn the Void Gates. And those are nice because they provide vision, they, the minion, the little voidlings who hop out provide vision as they go on their trail. You can even prompt, just drop this thing in a jungle and it'll give you vision as the minions head towards a lane. And, you know, that's a lot of vision. And it takes them a little while to kill it sometimes, especially early game. If you do manage to snowball and get this fast, it's great. Um, otherwise, it's generally your, your well-rounded resists. And like I said, you don't even have to get this item. In a lot of games, I tend not to actually get this item. Uh, I'll just stick with the basic resist items of the Raptor's Cloak and the Megatron Cloak. And, you know, kind of go from there. Um, sometimes I don't get enough money to get that or even finish my build. Uh, next, of course, Sightstone. Uh, Ruby Sightstone is one of the later things you actually want to upgrade to, so most times you just have the Sightstone. And the Sightstone itself is, you know, your support. You kind of need it. And it does give you health. In fact, the Sightstone is the only health item you really get in this build, but that's not bad. And let me explain about that real fast. Your heals and the fact that you can spam them so often gives you so much effective health, especially even over the course of a team fight, uh, provided especially if you're doing it uh, as a siege, you know, you're doing it during wave and stuff, and minions are dying around you, you'll be spamming your heal about five or six times in a matter of seconds. And what that means is for yourself at you know max rank, that's 180 points, a little bit more of the AP, but let's not worry about that. So if you think about 180 points times like say three times even, uh, you know, that's just, yeah, that's a lot of hit points right there. That's like, uh, what, uh, 540 ish more health, yeah, that you're getting, uh, during that team fight. But also, every time you're able to heal, you're also healing your allies for half that amount. So, that 540 to you is like 275 ish to them, yeah. Or 270-ish, yeah, whatever. And once again, I'm kind of thinking about the AP there, but yeah, whatever. But yeah, so 
that all around in just a few heals is a lot of effective health. Um, once again, Alistair has good base stats when it comes to health anyway, so you're not worried too much about that. Um, next is the Frozen Heart. Uh, that gives you 100 armor, which is what gives you all, you know, that's, that's a huge chunk of armor right there. 20% um, cooldown reduction and 400 mana. Now, of course, that 400 mana, when you go back to the Masteries and stuff and look at that, that gives you another point of health regen and, of course, you know, all that fun stuff. And of course you get an additional 5%, so you're looking at 420 mana really. So yeah. And of course that means more heals and stuff like that. And of course your Merc Treads uh, for Tenacity, uh, it's one of the best things you can get. You know, because you're already getting tons of movement speed anyway, so you don't need the other ones, uh, the Swiftness Boots, which I used to get on them, you know, ideally it's to be really mobile. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're good, they're good, but, you know, for this case the Tenacity is a really strong thing. And of course you get the movement speed and the match resist. And enchants for boots, home guards are pretty much the best enchant. Um, now, in the case of like, say, if you're getting towards end game and you haven't got the enchantment yet, and you still got all three of your mid turrets and at least two of your, you know, up uh, top and bottom turrets, whatever, or you know, and they're like all the way driven back to our base, you may not need home guards. You may just want to grab them the, the electric deep uh, enchant. That'll just give you the additional 20 movement speed, which when you consider the fact that. You know, with the drop portal, it's helping you, helping you run from base to lane uh, with the increased movement speed. And, of course, you got the movement speed from the Talisman Ascension and all that kind of stuff, and the 8% from Ardent Sensor. You know, you're be moving pretty fast anyway all around. And that'll also help you maneuver faster in team fights and everything else. So that could be potential, but only if you guys are really well off on your side. If you're, like, being pushed back to the turret. And of course, you may regret it if, you know, they should suddenly get a good victory on you guys somehow and, you know, push back hard. But it's there for a possibility. So once again, here's the total stats, though, from the build. You have the 200% HP and mana regen. You have 150 armor, 75 magic resist. Now, this build all together costs about 13k extra to complete. And that includes an enchant and such, as well as an upgrade for that. Um, you get about 65 or 85 if you get that. Uh, plus 8 to 38 percent movement speed, you get 40 percent cooldown reduction, as well as 400 hit points and mana. Now, the reason why I have the Greater Vision uh, totem here as an upgrade is because it has about the same cooldown as the base sweeping lens, uh, as well as the base, you know, uh, vision totem. Uh, sweeping lens upgrade is probably still what you want to go for, and it's probably what I'd go for if I get the money and the chance to upgrade it. And I really should probably focus on upgrading them more often. But still, uh, with this though, it actually drops a pink ward, and later game sometimes, I mean, while the sweeping lens is great, dropping a pink ward can be really good too, and if you're full build, it might be a good option to grab that, just so you can drop pink wards. And, of course, with the mastery intelligence, you drop this down by 15%, so you're looking at about 18 seconds off that. So you're looking at it only being a minute, or I'm sorry, 102 seconds. Or so yeah, it's a minute 42. So yeah, um, now let's go over the strengths and weaknesses of the build. Um, like I said, one of the problems with this build is heavy poke in the form of skill shots. Uh, early game can be really harsh on you. Um, it can, uh, you know, because either they'll focus you or they'll focus the ADC. Ideally, you would want them to focus you, really. Uh, or at least, you know, try to balance out the damage. Uh, that way you can actually sustain through it. I've dealt with uh, some heavy poke comps before where we still win lane because of all the sustain I have, but we're pretty low in doing it and we have to wait for a gank. Um, you know, they drive us into turret, they can still gank our focus and everything. And it's usually things that I can't body block too well, like, you know, Caitlyn's little, uh, um, little skill shot. You know, things like that. Um, they do, you know, sometimes hurt. That's usually games where I might have to go back early, you know, and grab the Nomad Medallion and then, you know, grab the Raptor Cloak as soon as I can type thing. Um, you know, type thing, you know, type situations. Uh, they're really rough, and usually in those type of lanes, um, because you have to go back early, you end up missing out on some other early farm. And it gets hard to catch up once you don't get the money. I've tried to put as much money again in this build as possible, being support. Uh, and once again, you know, I'll try to make this 
is as cheap a build as possible, the most expensive item being the Zerop Portal. But getting behind still hurts, especially if they get ahead. If you get behind and they get ahead, that it's just really, yeah, you know, really hard to catch back up. Uh, you have to go to much more passive play and just play the sustain game and try to keep your objectives alive. But usually that means you get stuck in bottom lane and you know it, it just gets bad from there. Um, it's not impossible to come back from that though, and it's still very possible to see at least achieve a positive KDA even when dealing with the uh, losing situation. Uh, and if you can stall things out long enough, maybe your team can catch up in the late game and still get a victory. That's happened with me before as well. Now that once again gets to the advantages of this build. Um, while you're not the tankiest as a tank Alistair, or, you know, you're definitely not a true healer in most cases, um, this actually makes you comparable to a true healer type support. Uh, it's a different way of playing Alistair. It's a much more safer way of playing Alistair. It's actually easier to play the Alistair this way than it is to play the more aggressive, uh, tanky, initiate Alistair most of the time. Um, with this build, you have to wait for your ult to really initiate, but when you do, it's a really strong initiate, and chances are, that's all you really need for most, uh, for your team to, to get, you know, get the, a full kill. Um, to win a fight. So you're jumping in and you're going for as long as you'll we'll go for. A little bit afterwards as you disengage. Um, chances are what you really want to do is be in there so long that when you get out of the fight and hopefully survive it, you have a sliver of health left. That's usually one of the best things because that means that you've made use of your entire resources of hit points, hopefully almost all your mana, your ult, as well as your exhaust, and you've done all you can. And at that point, if, you, if you're alive, you know, get out of there. Um, very few occasions do you need to try and re-engage. But even then, it's, you know, sometimes the sacrifice is worth it. Um, basically, with this build, though, you want to milk it for all it's worth. You can milk it for all it's worth. Alice, you're going to whatever. So, and usually it's because, you know, you're wanting to use your ardent sensor as much as possible, you know. That nice little attack speed bonus, plus you want to put the Frozen Hearts debuff on the, on the enemy team as long as possible as well. So, and of course, being able to pop the Talisman of Ascension just before either you know you go in or as you're coming out. You know, if you don't need it when you go in, great. If you need it when you're going in, then you know whatever. But if you don't need it for when you go in, you got it for when you're coming out, and that usually helps as well because you're leaving and they'll to chase down the remainder. Um, but yeah. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of a walkthrough of my uh, video guide for my support Alistair build. Now of course I'll be putting annotations in the video so you can check out the uh, actual game gameplay videos. I've got two games on uh, posted up already, so you guys can check those out and see how the play works in different setups. Um, I might try it for another game because the second game of those, it was an odd one where I had to face a... Uh, um, basically an ADC uh, Heimerdinger, so not really an ADC, and yeah, so I had to go for Negatron Globe there and all that fun stuff, but yeah, it's still kind of a fun game. Anyway, if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit the like, and of course if you want to, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next time.